Okay, guys. Um, 2020 Simpson Desert. It's the 29th of May. Uh, we're looking to go on the 2nd of August. COVID stuff still here, so we'll just have to see how we go. My intention is, if we can't do the Simpson Desert, then um, I'll do a lap of New South Wales and come home. Anyway, thought I'd make this quick uh, video for you so that we can, you guys can just see what it is that I'm taking, um, and that might help you with your planning as well. You know, you might want not want to take some stuff, you might want to take um, some additional stuff. So, uh, very quickly, all up, luggage, and when I'm loaded with the additional water and fuel that I will need to do the Simpson Desert, it will be 70 kilos and everything, give or take some food that I've probably consumed along the way. Uh, I think we're looking at five days, maybe six days to from Sydney to Birdsville with a few people coming in along the way. Um, up through Parks, Ningen, Cobar, Tilpa, skipping Wanaring into Tipperbara, Cameron's Corner, up to, um, we're going to head north instead of west, up into Queensland, through to Inaminica, Walker's crossing to Birdsville, Birdsville across to Mount Dare, and then we'll talk, you know, then back down through the Flinders, Cameron Ranges. However, what are we going to take? So, essentially, um, this is my setup. So these two tank bags, they're a Sun Mountain Sherpa tank bag, uh, full of clothes and a few other bits and pieces. So this bag's got some shoes in the back at the bottom of it, and this bag has heavy duty um, uh, 90 by 90 by 21 um, inner tube in it. I am running um, tubeless tyres, but if I get some sidewall damage, then I'll want to be able to uh, do something about it. And the 90 by 90 will do both front and back in an emergency. So, the reason these are mounted up front is because if I drop the bike, I've got front and rear protection. And I've found that this system works really well um, and it doesn't really impact upon the body. So that's why I distribute the, um, uh, the luggage around and also it gives me a little bit more freedom in the back. So, three pairs of undies, three pairs of socks, three shirts, uh, a towel, shoes, uh, long sleeve, two long sleeve shirts um, in case it gets cold at night, a rain jacket, a Gore-Tex rain jacket so it's nice and light and a, um, uh, a down jacket um, because it does get cold out there. <coughs> Hot during the day, so cold, you know, pretty cold at night. So that's what's in these bags and I'm not going to unpack them, uh, I'm just going to leave them as they are and we'll look at a little bit um, more of the gear that we've got over here. Um, Backpack, this will have three litres of water in it. It's got my hat with my uh, fly net in it. Some years the flies are really bad, some years they're not. I'm going to assume that they're really bad, um, and if I don't use it, I don't use it. I have two of these MSR four litre bladders, so they are going to get filled up and put on the bike in Birdsville. Um, so they fill up and they, you know, you can have just a little uh, stream or, or a bigger stream or take the thing off all together and, and pour all your water on the ground. Um, and they fold up pretty nice and small, so, and they're lightweight. Um, so that's why I'm taking those. And this is a pressurized Gergrig um, system. So you, you pump it up and it sprays water into your mouth. It's good for washing things down with. You don't have to suck to get water into yourself. Um, and I carry some basic first aid, so first field dressings and, and pressure bandages, stuff like that, um, on the backpack. And I carry my inReach on the backpack. If, I'm, if I get thrown from the bike, I want to make sure that I've got some basic first aid and this with me and some water uh, because I might not be in a position to be able to get back to the bike. This is great. If you know someone's text, uh, phone number, you can text them. Uh, you can pre-program it with certain texts and certain people. People can track me on it. I had an instance uh, last year where my wife saw that I was stopped in a certain uh, place, which seemed a bit strange to her. Um, so she texted me, is everything all right? I said, yes, we're moving on in 20 or 30 minutes. 
Uh, we would just stop somewhere to have lunch or whatever. It just seemed to her a strange place to stop at a strange time of the day. And she can just track me all the way um, around the world if, if I've got it activated. Um, it's, it's pretty effective. It's expensive to buy, but then it's 90 bucks or $99 a month, something like that in Australia. Um, and, and you can cancel and reactivate any time. Whereas with the spot, it was pretty limited in its functionalities and you had to pay you 250 bucks a year to keep it going. Um, so as soon as you wanted to go for a month, pay you 250 bucks for the whole year. And I just thought, you know what? This has got much more functionality. Pairs up with my iPad that I carry on the, I think it's Moto Garage um, clamp on the handlebars. So I carry a, uh, a iPad mini uh, for all my navigation. It pairs up with that um, and um, I can see when texts come in and, and I can choose to ignore them or, or stop the bike and, and, and answer them. I don't tend to try and type on the iPad and ride the bike in the dirt. Um, I'm not that good. Um, so let's, let's talk about what we've got here and, and what, what the plan is because this is really where the bulk of um, the luggage and the weight is going to live. So, I've, I like Moscow Moto gear. I bought the Reckless 80 five years ago, <coughs> flogged it across Australia and back, mainly on dirt roads, across the Simpson Desert and back a couple of times, you know, including the trip from sitting out to Birdsville and back, um, uh, areas of the Blue Mountains and, and around, um, around Sydney and uh, out around uh, the Bathurst sort of area, just north of Bathurst. So these have these have had a bit of a hard life in it by now, and they're still going. So I like the Moscow stuff. It's it's good quality, although you, you do pay for quality. Um, I also bought this at a time where the dollar was was pretty good against the American dollar, so um, I wouldn't want to have to buy them now. Um, and I don't I don't even know that I could justify making that purchase now. However, I have them, so all good. So in this top bag. Uh, which is a Scout 30, um, which is not what comes with the Reckless 80, but I purchased it separately. <coughs> the reason I've got this is because it, almost everything you see in these two leg bags will eventually transfer into this bag, and it will be slightly fatter that way, slightly fatter that way, but it will still only sit at about that height. Currently, it's got a sleeping mat, a pillow, and a sleeping bag in it. And that's, you know, and, and because, you know, it's, it's packed badly, but I mean, it is what it is for the time being. So there's that. What's going to go into that bag, once I need to free up a bit of space here, and I'll tell you why in a minute, is my Helenox chair. Um, I've spent plenty of time riding through Australia sitting on the ground, and a um, mate of mine came with me for part of a trip. He pulled one of these out, and I just thought, you know what? For a kilo or a kilo and a bit's worth of weight, um, that's a little bit of luxury that I think I deserve. So I went out and bought one uh, because I was I was always a man to sit on the ground and, and in the dirt and um, you, you know you drop your food and, and you do what you needed to do because you were hungry. This is just a much better uh, arrangement. And as I say, a couple of little luxury items that don't cost you too much. I'm all for it. Octane booster, where you don't have premium unleaded, you need Octane booster. I got enough there for 50 litres of fuel, so um, I should be able to get two fills uh, off that, and that's probably all I need. Uh, there are certain places where I can live without the, um, uh, the premium fuel because the distances between towns is not that great, and there are other places where I really need my fuel load to get me the distance and that's where the Octane Booster comes in. So that sits in there. I've also got pegs, so I'll just quickly talk about pegs. Uh, so these are for the tent, obviously. I use peggy pegs. So they're a screw-in type arrangement and um, they hold quite a lot uh, of, of force. They are pretty durable, they work in everything except you know the rockiest of rocky rock rock ground um, and they're lightweight so I, I carry all my pegs in there except for these and they're again they're a screw in, they're plastic, they're lightweight but you screw them into the sand so they're a sand anchor screw 
you screw them all the way in and then your load is transferred into them that way and they hold, again, a surprisingly large amount of force for what they are. Again, lightweight um, um, and, and, and they're a bit of a necessity. I carry some anti-strap straps because, so these are the elasticated ones, much better than uh, hockey straps because they don't have any hard bits to take your eye out with. The worst you'll get is a good slap in the face. So these, these are good, really like those. And then the Adventure Moto fuel bags, uh, or I think they're, yeah, I think they're Adventure Moto. Made in Australia, or well, sorry, made by an Australian company. Hold eight litres, come with an inbuilt spout, um, fold up nice and small. That is gonna be my fuel load. So I'll have one of those. I'll have a water bladder. So that'll be eight litres of fuel, four litres of um, water, and some other bits and pieces like the Octane Booster will be able to slide in there uh, in little places, maybe even the pegs, um, be able to find a spot in there for them. Uh, so I'll have 12 litres on in each leg of the Moscow Moto Reckless 80. So that's, that's what's in this side. In this side, I have a tent. Now, this is called the Quechua, but I see exactly the same tent in um, Decathlon. Um, and the beauty about this tent is the tent and the fly and the poles are all in there. Um, it stands up to the wind pretty well. And it's a sort of a one, it says it's a two man tent, but it's really a one and a half man tent. So I can get myself and a bit of gear in and out of the uh, weather in this, and I can also sit up in it. Um, and it's got, you know, I'm sure they've all got them, but it's got a little uh, roof net that I can put the iPad on and watch a movie or read a book or what have you, just lying on my back. So I, I really like this tent. It was the first tent I bought when I first started um, adventure uh, uh, bike riding. And, um, you know, five years later, it's still going, doesn't have a tear in it. I'm relatively careful with it. I really like that tent. I don't, assume when it dies, I'll probably just go and buy the same one. It's a little bit heavier than I'd probably like, about three kilos, a little bit bulkier, but it is an all-in-one um, uh, deal with that thing. In this side, I've got the same, um, as far as bladders are concerned, but I've also got this 10 or 12 litre, no, this is a 10 litre bladder, um, in addition. So I will need the full, um, I'll need eight, I'm eight, and I won't be putting 10 in this, I'll probably be putting eight, um, you know, between seven and eight litres in this one as well. Uh, it gets a bit uh, difficult to pack properly when it's really full. Um, and also I've got a, a bit of a seal issue around here, so it does leak a bit of fuel. So I'll probably put nine litres in it and expect to be able to have eight litres of usable fuel. The rest will just evaporate off. So that's what's in that leg. So essentially, that's all going to go into that bag and that'll sit on top and the profile is no, no more from a height perspective and from a width perspective than the tent sitting there. So um, that works reasonably well for me because it keeps, it, 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 it's low enough that I can actually get my ass back over the, the, the back of the bike when, even when I need to shift my weight back. In this bag, I have and I'm not going to unpack it. I've got food, breakfasts, lunch, and dinner for 11 days. And that's, that's predominantly drink dehydrated food, um, and, and breakfast is uh, porridge premixes. Um, I then have two hard cases. Uh, so they're just sort of kitchen type Tupperware containers. One has got first aid and uh, toiletries, and the other one has coffee, sugar, milk, uh, and um, uh, eating utensils in it. Then I've got a uh, stove, so I've got a jet boil. Um, I've got uh, uh, some uh, flat pack pots and pans, so uh, it's a pot with um, uh, a, a bowl and a cup in it as well, uh, and they will just pop out, so, so it'll pack nice and flat. 
And then I've got computer charging cables and my uh, spare battery pack and anti-gravity, uh, the big anti-gravity pack will jump start the bike, you know, 10 or 20 times if, if needs be. Um, and will charge up my phone or my iPad or my Garmin or my torch or any of those things um, overnight and still have plenty of power. And I can charge it back up off the bike because I've got a, um, uh, a 12 volt uh, charger, which I usually keep my um, um, iPad plugged into during the day because the uh, mud maps or, or earth may take up quite a lot of uh, power so you need to keep that going and also I want some I want to be able to get the site and <clears throat> play some music or watch some videos without having to worry about charging it and I've got a little speaker in there so we can you know do some music um, as far as the bike is concerned so I bought it from Richard Richard done almost all the things that, uh, that I've only done a few little basic minor stuff so the bike is pretty much stock standard from how I got it from Richard. He's done the suspension, Pirelli Scorpion tyre front and Mados Traxinator on the back. Um, they've had the shit flogged out of them and they're still going strong so I'm replacing those like for like. Um, I put the headlight protector and the double tape mirrors on. Richard's done the sun guard. I put another uh, guard over the front to protect some electronics and um, Richard put a Perrin Moto uh, um, uh, case carrier on the back. I put some Perrin, I replaced the foot pegs with Perrin Moto uh, tie down points, which are specific to the bike and supposedly specific to Moscow Moto gear, but I mean you can use them with anything. Um, and then in other little places, I've got some heat shrink. I've got some, you know, some short white bits of solder cable. I've got some, I've got two master links for this chain, and also because Marshall's probably going to be coming. I hope Marshall's coming, uh, and he's bringing um, his bike, which is my old bike. I've got a master link that fits that bike, which I found, or I thought, you know, I'll throw that in. Um, uh, probably does a DR650 as well, which I know Peter's got. I've got a um, Leatherman in the back. I've got pump, uh, you know, a, a, a tire pump pressure gauge, CO2 canister. Um, in this bag, I've got um, tire repair kit, because uh, we're running tubeless tires, so just plugs and, and, and the, the tools for it. Um, I do have the tube, if I get you know major damage, the plugs won't, fit, uh, won't fix. And then on this side in there, I've got uh, the tool kit. I've got way too many tools, um, but at the same time, you know, sometimes it's easier to have too many and know you've got too many than get out there and find out that you don't have enough to be able to do the job that you want to do. So I'll just quickly run through what I've got in here. So again, Moscow Moto gear. This tool roll is pretty good. Uh, Motion Pro Breed Breakers slash uh, tire irons, they're, they're an excellent sort of addition. I, I, I think they're, they're well worth the money. Um, in here, I've got two pairs of vice grips, a socket driver, um, some tools from the KTM kit, um, some smaller cable ties, some tire stuff, you know, um, a, a valve remover, and, and, and some spare valves. Um, in this side, I've got spanners, so ratchet and open-ended, um, and a shifter, and these are just um, like um, there's Allen keys, there's hex keys, there's screwdriver bits, um, there's Torx bits, and they all just fit into some of the screwdriver um, uh, bits. Uh, you know, uh, tools that I've got, and I've also got sockets. Um, and then I've got in here, I've got spare fuses, some webbing tape, some electrical tape, and some self amalgamating tape. Um, and I reckon, you know, if I need anything more than that, there's a very good chance that it's, I'm exceeding my uh, mechanical skill level anyway, so I may as well give up and start walking. Um, so, the 
type of food I've got, I have backcountry cuisine and I have strive and some pre-mixed um, uh, apple and cinnamon type um, uh, porridge mixes. I take long life milk on the, and I'm guessing with most situations I'll be able to buy milk as I go, uh, buy it in the afternoon at the last stop um, and and use it that night and the following morning and then throw anything else out. And then if you're if, if you don't have that ability to buy the milk, then, then I'm on to long life and I just buy the small packets. I don't like powdered milk, so I don't bother. I buy the small packets and that way if I open one and I don't use it all, I'm throwing away 300 mils of um, uh, milk instead of you know, a litre of milk. Um, and that's it. So I hope to um, see you out there and Get the Simpson, you know, right out to the Simpson, get the Simpson done. 1100 Sandhills, 550 Ks, nothing between Birdsville and Mount Dare except Dalhousie Springs. Day off in Dalhousie to soak up the, uh, uh, the warm water and natural, natural beauty of the place and uh, push on to Mount Dare where we'll fuel up, get some uh, food on board, and then uh, back down through the Gammon, Flinders Ranges, uh, and then the homeward stretch from. So we'll cross country into Yunta and then homeward stretch back along the Barrow Highway back into New South Wales, where we can all split up and go our separate ways and um, um, you know, hopefully get home safe and sound. Or on the proviso that Queensland opens its borders, uh, South Australia opens its borders, Northern Territory opens its borders, um, and we don't get a second spike of this ridiculous virus that is going around. Anyway, um, I don't think there's anything else I can show you. Um, I'm not going to untack bags and show you that I've got three pairs of undies, not four or five or whatever the case may be. It is what it is. And um, yeah, if you're going to do the Simpson Desert, you're probably going to have to, and ride your bike, not trailer it. If you're going to ride out there, you're probably going to have to think something along the, uh, these lines. You, you know, there's lots of luxury items that you can, you can do away with. Um, you can do a lot more staying in hotels um, uh, or pubs um, or eating at uh, roadhouses, that type of thing, to save a little bit of weight. But at the end of the day, I'm pretty self sufficient. I could be out there for I don't know, 15 days, I reckon, and, um, and, and really not need to have too much interaction with society other than fuel and water. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll see you out there.